Mother's Educational Grand Rounds podcast. Jim is not here today, or your typical host, but I'm filling in. I'm Sasha. I'm the physician here, assistant here at Seclair, and I'm accompanied by my colleagues. Hi, my name is Sumaima Wajid. Um, I'm a foreign medical graduate, and I'm doing my externship here. Hi, my name is Marisa Fornadel. I'm a PA student, and I'm doing my psych rotation here. So very exciting, and I'm glad that you guys are here with me. And last week, I know that Jim talked about social media and you know where it kind of came from and the history of it. And this week, we really want to talk about how social media affects us as far as our mental health and also our lifestyle. So for you guys, does anybody want to share what social media, like what does that mean to you? Um, recently, more and more, I've seen social media instead of keeping in touch with people. It's more of posting pictures and kind of just kind of putting your life out there so more people can see what you're doing. I've just noticed it's focused a lot more on pictures lately. Yeah, and do you use any social um, media? Social media, according to me, is basically everything like Facebook, the Twitter, which has all come up right now, and then more of like texting and being online with all these things and kind of getting addicted to it. Um, so this has... Uh, couple of problems which the pre-adolescents and the adolescents would have faced would be uh, probably like um, cyberbullying and online harassment wherein they involve like a second person and just keep harassing about that person without that person knowing it. Then some more things like sexting wherein uh, they show, uh, they send each other like sex related pictures or photos which is also influencing the youngsters a lot. And then something like Facebook depression, where and there are lots of um, teenagers who are facing the problem of depression, along with some fake ads, uh, which is leading to the pre-adolescents into substance abuse and much more. Yeah, so social media basically is people being able to connect with one another or have a personal self reflected out mm -hmm. on to a public screen. And the internet has given us lots of different ones, like you mentioned, Twitter, Facebook, yeah. you know, and, you know, businesses and everywhere, even we use them. And here you are watching our podcast. <laughs> but um, it's, it can be a wonderful thing because people can be connected like never before. It's turned our society, you know, into something mm -hmm. completely bigger than that. And we have seen some negatives come out of that, just like every major mm -hmm. change there can be some definite negatives. And so that's kind of what we were focusing on, on how it can negatively impact mm -hmm. people. And like you mentioned, there were some yeah. cyberbullying and things like that. Mm -hmm. When we go online, we can basically search for a place that we feel whatever we want to feel from it. So if you want people to support you, you can find that. If you want to learn information, you can find that. If you want, you know, to feel supported in, you know, very radical views. You can even find that it, it gives people opportunity and avenues that were never offered previously. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. And even yeah. if you want games or whatever you might be looking for. So even the traditional mental health issues that we have seen, such mm -hmm. as addictions and inferiority mm -hmm. issues, anxieties, all of those can be supported tenfold and magnified by something that you can find online through social media. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so um, it's also been helpful because through Facebook, a um, lot of school uh, teenagers, uh, they have been able to connect with each other and do their assignments outside. And they have connected with families who, with whom they were not able to connect for many years together and including the friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so there, there are definite positive aspects. Yeah. and. Now, a lot of the big talk about what negative is, is that everybody goes, oh, all the kids are always connected, or everybody's always connected, yeah. we're not living our real lives. And yeah. I actually looked up something that says that we're, on average, people in America are connected to a social media site at least eight hours yeah. a week, and it can be more than that. Which, how do you guys feel about that? <laughs> I was kind of like... I actually know, I think I know people that probably spend a lot more than eight hours. I feel like that kind of sounds low compared to what I've heard. Yeah, I but, guess. Which is scary, but... <laughs> I guess when you're averaging out. Yeah. But, I mean, it's true that people are connected a lot of the time. And it's because you can have those places online that you feel safe. Yeah. That you feel yeah. like you fit in. That right. you get along with people. If you yeah. 
are a person that likes to talk and give their opinion and get good feedback, you can post something online and at least somebody or, mm-hmm. or more is going to like it and support you. Mm-hmm. And if you're a person that wants to learn something or find information about somebody else, you can go online and not post anything. Just yeah. go under the radar and find out a lot of information. <laughs> yeah. Be a creeper or whatever it's called. Yes. So I feel that it's from past five years, uh, it's become more common. Um, getting uh, addicted to social media it's because of more accessibility to the smartphones and the Mm -hmm. internet where and we always keep getting addicted that if we know nothing to do we just go back to the Facebook or the Twitter and we just keep googling and searching for things Mm -hmm. so it's kind of become like addiction and that's what I like she mentioned it could be even more than that Yeah, there are actually some, like, psychological terms that have kind of come out of social media. Like, there's actually even a scale now that you can rate Facebook addiction for. And it's pretty much just like a a scale that you would rate or ask somebody questions about alcohol use. You just sub Facebook in for alcohol. Mm -hmm, Right. (laughs) Do you think about Facebook more most of the day? Do you go on Facebook more than once a day? Those kind of things. But it can be a huge effect on people's lives because then Mm -hmm. they stop living their lives day to day because they're always connected in a virtual world. Yeah. 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 And people can react very differently on a virtual world than they can in real life. Like you noticed anything like that? Do you want to say anything about that? Yeah. We were kind of discussing this earlier. Sometimes um, we were reading some articles too. People post this stuff on social media making it seem like they're completely happy with their lives and they're having a great time and they have so many friends but in reality, they're not happy. They're just posting these things in hopes it may be that if they look happy, they will be happy. And then you have other people seeing this, and maybe the people that are seeing it aren't happy, and then they're feeling bad about themselves, being like, oh, I should be as happy as this person. They're so happy. Why can't I be happy? And it's kind of just like a snowball effect. Yeah. Yeah, there are kind of inferiority complexes mm-hmm. that kind of come out of this perfect world. Like you can log on Facebook or see all these you know, friends that have perfect Mm -hmm. lives and good relationship statuses and, you know, pictures of their cat, you know, something like that. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, it it really distorts the image of reality for people. And then it makes the person sitting there looking at everybody else go, wow, my life isn't that exciting. Or Mm -hmm. you can see a a video on, you know, Twitter or a you know, a tweet that says, hey, I'm at this fun party and I'm having a blast. And you think, oh, wow, why am I not there? It shows right. all the opportunity that you have in the world that you aren't utilizing. So it can be very depressing for people. Right. Um, also, like, it's been a big concern for the parents recently because um, most of the te- teenagers, they appear to be offline in front of parents when they're actually online and the parents are unable to communicate with the kids about um how much uh, social media is influencing the children. And most of the pediatricians are concerned about this too. Yeah, they talk about, you know, time that you're logged on and connected and how yeah. you should maybe limit that so that mm-hmm. you can actually enjoy right. being present, you know, in your life. And here at Seclair, you know, we always talk about mindfulness and asking people to be in the present moment and kind of live where their heart beats, as Jim would say. Right. And this can kind of give us so many opportunities, but also opportunity to escape Mm -hmm. from our present situation, which isn't always the solution. Mm -hmm. And um, certainly, you know, we want you to follow us on Facebook and all those wonderful things. So like I said, social media has a very positive, you know, way of connecting people in a lot of avenues, but it can definitely be negative. And we want people to find that balance in their life so that they can live their life and enjoy the present moment, but then use social media as a way to connect with people that we previously didn't have and find information and enjoyable activities. So, you know, as we close, I thank you for watching our podcast. And as a tribute to Jim not being here today, we ask you to, you know, take some time, go out fishing. If you want a mindful experience, you can fish without bait and maybe turn your cell phone off for a while too. (laughs) And to continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter under Seclair Life. You can also find this and other Grand Rounds on youtube.com slash Video and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And please visit www.seclair.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog.